Well, hello, Stampers. I hope you are all doing great today. Today, you are creating with Colleen, and my name is Colleen Magnus, and um, I will teach you what to do. By golly, I may teach you what not to do. In fact, I got a little bit of that to teach you today, but I promise to teach you something. It is August 31st, and you are having lunch with me at my Facebook Live. I come to you live every Wednesday at noon Eastern Time. I cannot believe it's August 31st. Still warm here, but hopefully the humidity is down a little bit. Um, they say it will be this week. So I just wanted to let you know, uh, last week I was in New Orleans with Stampin' Up. They had a backstage conference. And I have to tell you, Stampin' Up is just an amazing company. The attention they put into detail and uh, the way they do their events, it is just so much fun. So it was a true blessing, I have to say, um, to see demonstrators that I have not seen in over two years. And even Stampin' Up! Style. Y'all like my little Mardi Gras beads? The kids have all the rest of them downstairs. But for our closing ceremony, they had blocked off the um, streets of New Orleans. We had a marching band. We had 500 Stampin' Crazy Women with our boas on our beads, our masks, and our parasol little umbrellas, and we were the parade in New Orleans. How fun is that? We were throwing beads to everybody. People are on the side of the streets cheering us on. Um, just fun, fun, fun. Their events department is absolutely amazing. So today I'm watching a couple of y'all pop on. I've got Sandy and Sherry and um, Melanie. Oh, Melanie, you must be new. Welcome. And a few others, I'm going to, I just think I'm going to be good here. I'm going to really try to just focus on the comments. Because in my screen, I really can't get comments in the view. So hopefully you'll be watching me. Somebody give a holler out if for some reason I'm not in view. So hey, Miss Patty. Well, today I'm going to talk about these two cards and show you how to make them. Because it is the last day of celebration. So with celebration, um, y'all know it was this wonderful catalog. And I'm going to, at the end, tell you some products that are not available and a product, a hot one, the tree dies, that was not available, but I can let you know how to get them. You know, you always have a stash. Um, hey, Gwen and Barb is here. Well, I'm going to get started. But again, the set that I am using today is called Perfect Pomegranate. So this is a stamp set that the hostesses received if they had a $300 party or placed a $300 order. Well, I'm gonna let you know a different way of getting this too, because I have a couple of these. So uh, stick with me and I'll give you all the details at the end. <clears throat> but for now, let's go ahead and put our beads aside and create. Simple cards. I have to confess, when um, I first saw the Perfect Pomegranate stamp set, I was like, well, that's cute. That's, you know, that's cute, but that's kind of all I thought. Then I stamped with it. And I should have known because it is distinctive stamping and it's great and it's generic so it can make any card depending on the sentiment that you put with it. So here, these these are, this actually, they I don't know how to say, is these or whatever. This is our note card. So for this card, typically when you buy the note cards, they are 20 in a pack. They're found on page 137 in the annual catalog. And again, you get 20 cards, 20 note cards um, for only $7. So typically, you would create with your note card, which is five by three and a half. Um, and you would just use your envelope. It fits perfectly. But I wanted a little bit of an edge going around, so I cut it down just a quarter inch. So I took one of the note cards and I took it from five by three and a half, and I just cut a quarter inch off. So now it's four and three quarters by three. And that's the piece. And I've got the envelope here that'll fit perfectly in because I made my cherry cobbler base five inches by three and a half. And when I put this on here, it's the size of the original note card that I can slide in here. So let me show you how quick and easy and simple this is to stamp. I got my edge there. Okay. So with this cut down version, I'm going to take my scrap paper here 
And you always want to make sure it's open. Don't ever stamp a piece of paper that like this if you're going on the front because this will slide down and it'll um, smear the image. You always want to stamp on flat cardstock. So the first thing I'm going to stamp, of course, is my sentiment. So I needed a sentiment and I chose the Celebrating Flowers. This is a great stamp set. I love the sayings in here. And of course, who doesn't love a sunflower? So I'm gonna use the thanks a bunch because I think a note card is the perfect size to send for a thank you card. So just take the thanks a bunch. I've inked that up and I will, it's hard to see the white on white, but I have thanks a bunch in the bottom right corner. Hey, Steph, I'm glad you're here. So then I'm gonna take the perfect, these little pomegranates, and I'm gonna stamp them next because my leaves are going off the top and I wanna make sure I have plenty of room for my pomegranates. So I'm just gonna stamp them here. And again, I love the distinctive stamping. And next, I will just take my leaves, these the three leaves in the shaded spruce. And since I am actually backing this on a piece of paper, I could stamp back here, um, but I'm afraid that this fold, since it's kind of a ridge fold, would leave a little bit of a gap. So I am gonna fold this, but it's okay to do that because I'm gonna hold, hold crease that and hold this down so I know that's flat. So I'm just gonna take my leaves and I'll just stamp on here. I make sure my stem is going across the top, over the top. And let's drag some more leaves in here. And then for my little speckles, I always like to have speckles and my go-to speckles are from the Forever Fern stamp set. Again, another beautiful distinctive stamping set, but I use these little speckles for almost everything. So that I can open up a little bit. And I usually like to tap off because I want them to be very light. I always say there's like a fine line between a speckle and a snowstorm. You don't want a snowstorm on your card. So there you go. All right. And then with my cherry cobbler, again, I'm gonna crease this down. Get back in my little stand. And then I'll just take my stamp and seal and mount this to my card base. And you can see just how quick and easy it is. Get out of there. To make a bunch of little cards. And of course you don't want a naked envelope. So with this, I'm just gonna stamp my pomegranates on the top here. Again, in my cherry cobbler. And voila, I don't know if anybody timed me, um, but that did not take long. So another thing you could do that is really pretty is if you have a bunch of these cards, bundle them up, bundle them up and tie them with some pretty ribbon. And this makes a really nice gift to give somebody, do like three or four of them. And I think they would really appreciate it. So next, this card here, this card, uh, Pretty much, I would say inspired, but there was very little change on it. Originated from Celine Kempton, and I loved the card. Now, when she did this, this these were the Seafoam and Pool Party Celebration card bases. So if you have those, you could use them, but I didn't have them. But Seafoam, soft Seafoam is such a beautiful, soft color. So I just got a piece of cardstock. I figured that would work too. So for this one, let me give you the measurements. You have a piece of three by four inch, very vanilla, three and a quarter by four and a quarter soft suede. And then you have your four and a quarter by 11 inch of the um, soft sea foam. And you're gonna score this at five and a half. So it's soft sea foam right there. Very simple. Now, one of the things that I wanted to teach you and talk to you about today are the ink pads. 
probably about four years ago. It's been a while. So if you've been stamping, you might've ran into the problem. When they switched over to the foam ink pads from the cloth pads, we had a little bit of a problem with the chemicals in the red ink. So if you got like a cherry cobbler, a real red ink pad, possibly even a mossy meadow, since that has the, that um, red tint in there, if you had those, your ink pad may have gunked up, for lack of a better word. It may look kind of crazy. So like this is my um, this is my Mango Melody, and as you can see, it looks like there's something wrong with the pad. And what it was, it was um, the chemicals were not working well in the pads. And again, this was like four years ago, only with the red tints. And Stampin' Up! replaced many, many pads. You know, they stood behind their product on that. So they fixed a problem. I talked to them at Backstage this week, and we really don't have uh, a problem problem with that anymore but if you do here's the trick that I didn't know if you had the problem with that pad when you buy the new pad you should also buy the reinker a new reinker because again it's the ink that is causing the problem on the pad so if you're buying a new ink pad but yet you're using the old reinker then guess what you're creating the same problem over and over and you know, stamping up again, they replace these in the beginning. This is four years later. They do consider an ink pad or an ink refill a consumable. So I don't know that they're replacing them anymore because again, the problem has been fixed. But if this problem is ongoing for you, that could be the problem. That was like an aha moment for me because I had no idea. Um, so now I know. So when I buy, because I did this with my cherry cobbler, um, I will buy a new ink refill. They're only $4. So get rid of the old one if you're having a problem. If you're not having a problem, you're good. Now I'm also going to confess on my Mango Melody, I love the way it stamps. <laughs> Call me weird, but look. I mean, part of this is the stamp with the distinctive stamping. But with the light and the dark, I'm never getting rid of this pad. I love it. I will probably get a new one one day, but I see no rush because I really like the way it stamps. So let's get stamping. But that is your school lesson for today. Who knew? Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the leaf that I have here, and I have to confess, I was making these cards before I went to backstage, and I don't know what green I used on the tips of my leaves. In fact, I think I used about four of them until I found the one I liked, and then I couldn't remember which one that was when I came back. So we're just going to experiment today. So here I'm taking Granny Apple Green, and I'm going to take a sponge dauber, and I'm just going to use the shaded spruce, since I think that could be it, and I have it on the table anyways. So I'm just going to touch up my tips of my leaves here, kind of coming around. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp off on the top of that very vanilla. So I have this here. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to have two flowers at the end here. So I kind of want to put them at the end and close enough counts, right? Right here. So here I have my leaves and don't think it's the one, but it is pretty close. It's real pretty that you have the variegated leaves in here. So when I have this, I am going to go to my Mango Melody leaves. And actually, you know what? I wanted to do something different. Okay, remember how I will um, teach you what to do or what not to do? You can do this and it works because you have the green. I wanted that to be brown. Thank God we have two sides of a piece of cardstock. Take two. Okay, just rub that off. And actually, I think it was brighter, so I'm going to get a different green. This is live, right? So you see what really happens in the stamp room. This is Parakeet Party. I think it's a little brighter than the Granny Apple Green, so let's just go there. Okay, so we'll do some Parakeet Party. We will go back to our shaded spruce. You know, one of the things they were teaching us at Backstage is that, you know, 80% is close enough. If I ever tried to go back and make my videos perfect, which I really, really wish they were, I'd never get anything out online. So 
That's just me. It's real. This is what happens. I hope I can still teach you. So now I'm just taking an old blender pen. I kind of showed you this um, on a couple different projects. But since I want my stem to be brown, I'm just going to take some of this green ink off of the stem. My leaves are all still inked up, so that's great. Then I'm going to take an early espresso marker, and you want to use your broad end, your fat end. And I'm just coming in here and hitting this stem. Now you want to do this on the side of your marker. You never want to compromise your tips, the tips that you have of the marker. All right. Now I will like this 10 times better because it is going to be a brown stem. So you're going to huff it, not blow it, huff it. That will actually kind of activate all the ink again because this is a classic ink. So it's water-based and it brings it back to life. Oh, I think that's it. I think that is a real deal. Because even when you look, look, I was afraid I'd really mess it up. So I did a second one. Those were the colors I used on the leaves. So it was Parakeet Party along with shaded spruce on the tips. Take an old blender pen, take out some of that uh, green on your stem, ink it back with an early espresso marker, and boom, that's what you got. So now go into my fun, funky pack. And again, this would be just as beautiful, even if you had um, a regular pad. So here, I don't really want that stem. So I'm just, I'm wearing jeans. I'm just going to wipe that off and wipe it on my leg. It's all good. So I'm going to put this here and then one other flower. Put this on this side. And I probably should have a mat underneath here. So I have this one, but I made them touch, so I'm going to cheat and get the one I like better. Always pays to have a spare. And then last but not least, I am going to take from the Happiness of Bounds. I have always um, loved the fonts in here. I love the way it looks, and I love the sayings. So I am going to actually use the Wishing You All the Happiness You Can Imagine. So with that, I'm going to take my Early Espresso. And just right down here, you're wonderful in every way. So with that, I'm just going to take my, let me put this here, adhesive. And I will mount this on my soft suede. Oh, Sandy loves the blender pen trick since I mentioned it a few videos ago. It really is great. And, you know, everybody loves the blends. Blends are great for coloring, but a blend would not work with this technique because it's an alcohol base. So it's not going to do well. So really, don't even try it on your stamps, but the water-based markers always work good. And Stephanie, you missed the lesson of the day because you were climbing into the pedicure chair. So you get to watch the replay. It was about our ink pads. Anyways, I've told everybody about it, so they're like, just keep moving on. Um, but it's worth listening to. So here, I'm just going to take my dimensionals. And I am going to, and I'm envious of you getting a pedicure, although I did get one before New Orleans. Can never travel with funky piggies. You got to have them looking good. And then here, I have my soft sea foam. And again, this card was Celine Kempton's, but I absolutely loved it. I um, can't remember if she had the bow or not. Again, I didn't change much. But this is a satin edged ribbon that is in the mini catalog. And um, so I have that. And actually, that is on page, just so you know where we're talking about. That is on page 31. So this is the Golden Vanilla Satin Edged Ribbon. Very beautiful. And everybody loves the Lights of Glow 6x6 Designer Series paper. The card that I actually did uh, for Bingo featured this paper. And it is not available at the moment, but give it a week. It's going to be available the week of September 5th. And that literally is just right around the corner. So I am going to take a glue dot. I will just put a little glue dot. I always put my item on the glue dot and then pull it off. I'm just going to pop it up on my 
branch here. And Cheryl Fair, I saw that you had popped on, and I know you have this stamp set because you were the host um, last month and you really wanted it. So hopefully this will be a nice card to give you some ideas of what to create with. So here you have iridescent pearls. Got to have just a little bit of bling. And so I'm going to put a larger one down here at the bottom. And then maybe a smaller one right here. Uh, okay. And then one up here. Move this one out just a little bit. And that, my friends, is the second card. So two really simple, fun cards using the perfect pomegranate set. And again, this set, um, you can place a $300 order or have a party with your friends. But I have an extra one that I would like to offer you as a door prize. So if you place an order between now and September 6th, you must use this host code. You can go to uh, creatingwithcolleen.com to place your order. But if you place any size order um, by September 6th with this host code, I will draw the name of two lucky winners and you will win the perfect pomegranate stamp set. It's just a great set that I'd love to get in your hands and just help you create. So that is my show today. Now we have, I'm going to have a newsletter out today with this uh, in video and information. And then tomorrow I am going to send another newsletter because we have some special starting and I'll include a different video in there. So if you don't currently get my newsletter, go to creatingwithcolleen.com and request it. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Everything I do is Creating with Colleen. So I hope you will like and support uh, you know, um, share, do all those wonderful things. And as always, if you leave a comment and you like and share my Facebook page, I will draw uh, the names and you can let me know which card you like. And so next week I will let you know and you send me your address and you will get one of these beautiful cards and when I draw your name. So for last week, actually not last week because I was in New Orleans. I tried posting a video. I scheduled it. It did not post. Um, so I did end up just posting it at a later date, but Doris Fryman was our winner of this card that I showed two weeks ago. So Doris, thank you so much, um, for doing this. You do need to private message me your address and I will happily drop this in the mail to you. So I hope you all had a great time today. Uh, I'm usually used to eating like two huge meals by now. We literally ate our way through New Orleans. So I am going to go downstairs and have lunch because my tummy has been growling. I hope you didn't hear it over me. So bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, I will be here next Wednesday, of course, at noon to create with you again. And until then, if there's anything I could do for you or um, anything you need, please never hesitate to ask. I love you all and I'm here to help you any way I can. Enjoy the day. Bye-bye.